Hi, in this video, we're going to look at how to write code to control a game that you're building in Unity. Uh, in the past few videos, we've been looking at how to set up a scene in Unity and, and how to add different assets to a scene. And so at the moment, I've got a player object here and I've got a few different platforms. And there are some things that I can interact with here like crystals or a box, uh, climbing ladders, and there's also um, some spikes there. So from this point on, uh, I'm going to need to implement things like player movement so that the player can move across the platforms and, and jump from one platform to another. Uh, I'm going to also need to add things like collision detection to detect when I've walked on spikes, um, maybe to take off some health or um, the score, uh, or maybe to increase the score when I collect objects like crystals or gems. And so we're going to have to add things like player movement, collision detection, scoring, uh, managing health, and uh, maybe controlling the UI as well. Lots of different things that we can add, but to do that, we're going to need to write some code. So we're going to be using the C-sharp programming language to write code for our game. And when we write code for our game, we, we organize the code into different files, and those files are called scripts. So each script will be responsible for a different thing. We'll have a script for controlling player movement, We'll have a script for controlling uh, the score and um, for controlling health and things like that. And maybe for managing levels and respawning and all of those different kinds of things. So Unity is the program that we've been using for editing the game and adding all the assets to the game. But now we're going to need to use a code editor to write and edit the code for the game. All right, and there's a few different code editors you can use. Uh, you can use whatever code editor you, you like. I'm going to be using Visual Studio. And so when you are installing Unity, um, you probably asked if you'd like to install Visual Studio or, or a code editor. So I've already got Visual Studio installed, which will run on uh, Mac and PC. If you don't have it, you can go to visualstudio.microsoft.com and you can download it there. It is a large program though, so it might take a, a little while to download and install. The other option is you can use Visual Studio Code, which you can get from code.visualstudio.com. It's a much smaller program, it's much faster, much lighter, um, but it won't have all the different testing tools uh, and functionality that you'll get in Visual Studio. So Visual Studio has got a lot of different tools for testing and um, it's also, um, if you installed it with Unity, It'll have built in, um, it'll recognize the different functions that you can use for a Unity game and um, have auto completion and, and things like that. So I'd recommend Visual Studio, but you can use another code editor that you're familiar with if you like. Uh, so you'll need to download and install that if you don't have that. All right, also, whichever uh, editor you want to use for your code, you can actually change that, you can specify that. So if you go into the Unity preferences, which on a Mac is under Unity and then Preferences. Uh, on a PC, I think it's hidden in a, another menu there somewhere, but uh, you can go to External Tools in the Preferences and then External Script Editor, and you can specify which program you want to use for editing your code. Okay, so now uh, a good thing to do before you get started is to create a folder to organize your scripts in. So I'm gonna create a folder here called Scripts. Okay, and then uh, once you've got a folder for your scripts, then you can actually create a script. So you can right click here and go create, and you should see C Sharp script. So if you click on C Sharp script, that'll create a new script file. Now what's very important before you click out of that or hit the enter or return key, is that you give this script an appropriate name. All right, so it's really important that your scripts start with an uppercase letter and that they don't contain spaces. Otherwise you're gonna run into issues later when you open uh, the script and try to attach it to an object. So this is just gonna be for testing and demonstrating how C Sharp code uh, looks and, and works. And in the next video, we'll start uh, looking at how to control the movement of the player. So uh, each script should have a, a good name like player movement or scoring or health, um, level manager, things like that. But this script is just for a quick demo. So I'm just gonna call it my script. You can see I've started with an uppercase letter and there's no spaces in there. So always remember to start with an uppercase letter and don't have any spaces in the, the name of that script. Once you've created a script, you can double click on it to open it in your code editor. And once you've written some code for that script, you can then attach it to an object that's in the hierarchy 
for the scene that you're working on. So scripts, in order for them to run in the game, they do need to be attached to an object that's in the game. So for example, if you wrote a script to control the movement of the player, then you would probably attach that to the player object. Uh, and if you wrote a script for um, maybe making these spikes or move across uh, the platform left and right or something like that, then you might attach that script to the spike. Okay, so a script needs to actually be attached to something to work in the game. And if there are errors in that script that stop it from working, then you also won't be able to run the game or build the game. All right, I'm gonna double, double click on this script now and uh, it should open up in Visual Studio. And this is my script here. And you can go into preferences as well if you want to uh, make your theme dark or light. So I like dark themes, so I'm gonna to stick to that. And I might also make the font size a little bit bigger uh, so it's a bit easier to see in this video. Okay, so up the top of the code, uh, you'll see a few different lines here. It says using and then system.collections or system.collections.generic and then Unity Engine. You don't need to touch anything there. Um, basically, these are different um, collections of functions that are gonna be available to use in our script. So we need to make sure we have access to those things. And then sometimes when we're adding additional functionality to, to a game, we might need to import some other functions um, ready to use in our, in our code. And so we might add another line of here saying using and then the um, set of functions or the package that we wanna use in this script. So at the moment, you can just leave that blank, but uh, sorry, leave that as it is. Don't delete anything. You don't need to add anything to it. All right, then we'll see below that, you'll have public class, all right, which is this block here, public class my script. So right there is gonna be the name of your script. If we go back to Unity, uh, we can see I call that script my script. So that's what shows up here in the name of this class. So that's why, as I mentioned before, it's really important that your script name starts with an uppercase letter and no spaces. And the reason for that is because when you have a class in your code, the rules for a class is that it starts with an uppercase letter and it can't contain any spaces. That's one of the rules of this C-sharp programming language or the syntax of the language. And if you don't follow those rules or syntax, then you'll get errors in your code. So a class is, um, bit like a, a blueprint where we can organize all of our code that's going to be related to um, the functionality that we're trying to implement into the game in this particular script. So if we had a script that was for player movement, then all of the code for that player movement functionality would be organized into the, the class called, my, uh, called player movement, or whatever you call that script. Okay, so all basically the code that's going to um, implement the functionality that you're trying to achieve with this script is organized into a class and it can actually be reused across different objects. So if we wanted to make a, a script to make a platform move back and forth, we could attach that script to multiple platforms and reuse that functionality. So a class can be like a blueprint that we can reuse to implement um, features or functionality throughout the program. All right, and the class is all of the code within that class is contained within curly braces, which we can see one starts here, and then there's a closing one down the bottom here. So that's the start of the class and the end of the class. Inside the class, we have two methods. One's called start and one's called update. All right, and so code that we're gonna write uh, can go in these different, in between the curly braces for these two methods here, but we can also add and create more methods below as well. All right, so we have a method here called start. So the start method is where we write any code that we want to run just once when this uh, script runs. Okay, so when the, the game loads and this script, the code in this script runs, then any code that's in the start method here in that block between these curly braces will only run once at the beginning of the game. But anything that we want to run repeatedly, any code that we want to run constantly throughout the game and, and to repeat those instructions, uh, that goes in the update method here in this, in this block of code between these braces. 
And that's because the update method is called every single frame. So it's running constantly many times a second uh, as the game is running. Okay, so just again, any code in the start block here is gonna run once at the start of the game and any code in the update block here is going to repeat constantly. It's gonna run every single frame during the game. All right, to, uh, oh, and actually also there's other methods that we can use. So uh, we can below that in this class here, we can refer to other methods that um, are used in Unity. For example, it, um, we can use methods that are specifically for detecting collision between uh, the object that this script's attached to and another object. So we'll look at that later on in some other tutorials, but we can uh, use methods that exist in Unity and we can also create our own methods and we can create our own classes as well. Um, okay. Now to test this out, just to demonstrate how this works, I'm going to uh, use a debug dot log statement. And you can see here in Visual Studio, it's automatically providing different suggestions as I type because it recognizes the different functions and statements that are available in the C-sharp language. So I'm gonna say debug dot log, hello world. And I've written this line of code in the start method, which means that when I run the game, in the console, which is an area, um, a panel in Unity where you can display different messages like view error messages or view messages for testing. We should see this message, hello world, display there when the game starts. All right, so I'm gonna save this script. Just press Command S or Control S if you're using window, or you can go to the file menu and, and save it from there. So you need to make sure you save your script before you go back to Unity so that those changes can be applied. And Unity will just refresh and it'll just recognize that you've updated the script. And if I selected that script, we can see over here in the inspector panel that it's actually showing a preview of that code that we've written. Now for this script to run, we need to attach it to an object. So I can attach it to any object that's in the current scene, but I'm going to attach it to the player. So you just click and drag it onto that object in the hierarchy. And now if I click on the player and scroll down in the inspector panel, I can see uh, that there's a script attached to it, my script, all right? If I wanted to remove this script, I can click there and just uh, remove that component. But what I'm gonna do now is select the console and I'm gonna run the game and watch the console and we should see a little message there when the game starts. We should see a little message there saying, hello world. There we go. So we see a little debug message there saying, hello world, which is just only happened once. The game is still running, but we just see that message once. So debug log uh, statements are really useful for when you're writing code and you just wanna check whether part of the code is running or maybe you want to output the value of a variable that's containing some information. It's, it's very useful for testing just to see what's going on in your game. But what we're gonna do now is go back to the code and I'm gonna cut this debug.log statement and I'm gonna paste it in the update method or update block. So what this means now is that when we run the code, we'll run the game and this code, this script runs, because this code, this statement here is in the update block, it should repeat constantly every single frame as the game is running. So I've saved that script. I'm gonna go back to Unity. Just wait a second for Unity to refresh and uh, recognize that the script's been updated. I've still, I don't need to attach this script to the player anymore, again, because it's, it's already there. So um, once the script's attached to an object, you don't need to do it again, it's, it's still there. So I'm gonna run this game again and click on the console. And now what we can actually see is we're seeing that hello world message come out um, many times a second. We can actually see a count here of how many times that message is being displayed in the console. So it's happening every single frame. If I stop the game, uh, yeah, we can see a really long list of hello world debug messages in here. And that's because uh, that line of code was put into the update method, which has been called or run every single frame in the game. Okay, so that was just to demonstrate the difference between the start method and the update method. All right, uh, you can always clear your console. And so, as I said before, this is where you'll see um, error messages if there's a problem with your code. 
uh, error messages will display here uh, explaining what error has been detected and, and maybe um, what line of code it's been detected on and what you need to do to fix it. Um, so it's really useful for debugging and, and trying to locate problems in the code to fix. But it's also very useful just for debug log statement. But I'm not going to use this script anymore because that was just to demonstrate the structure of the code in C Sharp and um, how the start and update methods work. So I'm going to remove it from the player, go back to the player object, go down here, click on those little three dots there and remove that component. And I won't need this script anymore. So I'm also going to delete it. All right, and in the next video, what we'll be doing is creating a new script for player movement. And we'll be looking at how to write the code in C Sharp to uh, get the player to move left and right when we press the uh, directional keys on the keyboard. And then after that, we'll be looking at how to make the player jump so we can move from one platform to another. And we'll be using C Sharp code to implement scoring and health and uh, other um, functions or features of the game. That's it for this video though, thanks for watching.